We return now to Westinghouse Studio One and the trial of John Peter Zenger. <coughs> Mr. Attorney General, Mr. Attorney General, you will proceed. May it please your honors, gentlemen of the jury, the charge against the defendant, John Peter Zenger, is that he did willfully and maliciously print a false, scandalous and seditious libel in which His Excellency, the governor of this province, who is the king's immediate representative here, was greatly and unjustly scandalized. Such libeling is a thing that has always been discouraged, as a thing that tends to create differences among men, ill blood among the people, and oft times great bloodshed. There can be no doubt that you, the gentlemen of the jury, will condemn these practices and find the defendant guilty as charged. Mr. Chambers, Mr. Chambers, the court is waiting, Mr. Chambers. <clears throat> Your Honours, gentlemen of the jury, my client, John Peter Zenger, pleads not guilty to the charge. Order in court. Order. May it please the court. Yes, what is it, Mr. Chambers? What is it? Your Honours, may it please the court. I've just been informed that the accused has retained co-counsel. What is this? Who, sir? Who? I should like to introduce to the court Mr. Andrew Hamilton of Philadelphia. May it please the court to summon Mr. Hamilton, who's waiting outside. Let him be summoned. Andrew Hamilton? Your Honours, I move the court to allow Mr. Hamilton to practice before this bar and that the required oath be administered. You do us a great honour. Mr. Uh, thank you, sir. Had I been informed of your pleasure before, sir, these matters could have been attended to in the privacy of my chambers. Well, I regret that circumstances prevented my enjoying so outstanding a privilege. Uh, uh, I am ready to take the oath now. You will raise your right hand. Do you swear before this bar to abide by the laws of our Lord and Majesty the King and all ordinances pertaining to the trial of this case? I do. Welcome to our bar, Mr. Hamilton. It's a pleasure, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Chambers, you have pleaded your client not guilty to the charges issued against him. Do you wish to pursue the matter further? Uh, Your Honor, I beg the indulgence of the bench, but may I ask if it is the intention of the Crown to call witnesses to prove that John Peter Zenger uh, published these so-called libels? We intend to do exactly that, Your Honor. We have uh, witnesses who will prove the honor. I will say, Mr. Attorney General, the trouble of going any further into the matter. I do confess for my client that he both printed and published the statements set forth in the chart. Order in the court. Order. Well, now, as Mr. Hamilton has confessed the printing and publishing of these libels, I think there is nothing to do further but for your honours to instruct the jury to return a verdict for the Crown. Oh, your honours, uh, Mr. Hamilton. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, you will have to prove something more than this before you make out my client to be a libeler. The words printed themselves must be libelous. That is false, seditious and scandalous, or else most assuredly we're not guilty. Your honours, I... I think that there is nothing plainer than that the words used in the articles are scandalous and tend to sedition. If that is not libel, 
may safely say there can be no such thing as a libel. Oh, may it please the court. I observed just now that Mr. Attorney General, in defining a libel, made use of the words scandalous and seditious. But uh, whether from design or not, I cannot say. He omitted the word false. Well, I repeat, a libel is still a libel, notwithstanding it may be true. Now, in this, I must again differ with my honorable colleague. I point out to him that the indictment to which my client pleaded not guilty accuses him of a, now, I quote, a certain false, malicious, seditious, and scandalous libel. Now, I say to this court, the word false must have some meaning, or else how came it there? Now, to save the court's time, I will agree that everything Mr. Zenger printed of the, about His Excellency the Governor is seditious, scandalous, and a libel, providing only that Mr. Attorney General proved them false. Oh, I object! This is most irregular! Most uh, irregular indeed! Uh, uh, Mr. Attorney General is reluctant to prove the word false. Then, Your Honor, we will take the task on ourselves and prove them true. Mr. Hamilton! Fred! Fred! Order in the court! Mr. Hamilton, it is not permitted to give the truth of a libel in evidence. A libel is not to be justified, for it is nonetheless a libel that it is true. But I'm sorry the court has so soon resolved upon this bit of law. The law is clear, sir. You cannot justify a libel. Well, you say that truth is no defense of libel, Your Honor. Well, now, I respectfully must point out the incongruity of such a position. I see a man slay another. I print that such a man is a murderer. Am I then a libeler? Now, truth is fact, and facts, I submit, are the very reverse of libel. Now, look further, Your Honor. If this be the case, that truth is no defense of libel, what then should be printed in the public press? Never a word can be raised against a tyrant. What stands against a tidal flood of corruption if it is not the threat of a fearless press that will exercise the inalienable right of every man to protest? To protest! Mr. Hamilton. After the courts have declared an opinion, it is not good manners to insist upon a point in which you are overruled. I will say no more at this time. Use the courts with good manners, sir. And you are not to be permitted to argue against the opinion of the court. Gentlemen of the jury, it is to you we must now appeal. For witness, we are denied the liberty of proving the truth of the facts deemed libelous. Gentlemen, power may justly be compared to a great river. When it overflows its banks, it bears down all before it. It brings destruction and desolation wherever it spreads. If then this is the nature of power, let us at least do our duty, and likewise men who value freedom use our utmost care to support liberty, the only bulwark we have against lawless power. As you see, I labor under the weight of many years. I am bowed down with great infirmities of body. Yet old and weak as I am, I should think it my duty, if required, to go to the furthest part of this land to fight persecutions that aim at depriving a people of the right of remonstrating. I am of complaining, too, against the arbitrary attempts of men of power, men who injure and oppress the people under their administration, provoke them to cry out and complain. Then make that very complaint the foundation for new oppressions and persecutions. Now, the question before the court, and you gentlemen of the jury, is not a small nor private concern. It's not the cause of a poor printer, uh, nor of New York alone, that you are trying. No, 
It may, in its consequences, affect every free man in America. And I make no doubt that your upright conduct this day will entitle you to the love and esteem of all men who prefer freedom to a life of slavery. They will bless and honor you as men who have baffled an act of tyranny. By your impartial and uncorrupt verdict, you will have laid a noble foundation for securing to ourselves, to our posterity, and our objects, the right and the freedom and the liberty of exporting and operating arbitrary power by speaking and writing the truth. The defense rests. Liberty and law boldly despise the haughty knave that would keep us in arms. I'm setting up the story, Mr. Zenger. Good, Samuel. I'll get some fresh paper. Is there ever anything better than to come home? It's over. Yes, part of it is over. Part of it? A little part. The case of John Peter Zenger is over. But we must remember what Mr. Hamilton said, that it is not only the case of a poor printer, or of New York alone, but of every free man in America. That struggle is not over, John. It is hardly begotten. Mr. Zengel, we're ready to start. Is it a good story? I think it is the best that I've ever done. We'll see. Ah, the press is in good order, Sam. Samuel has been careful. Yes. Well, we'll make it shout. Make it growl. Make it plead. Make it argue. Make it defend. Make it sing. But... We must always make it speak the truth.